I'm Brini from Slain and Spines and welcome to my video. Here we go. So I have like one page left in the journal that I am currently using and I am a pretty avid journaler so I thought that maybe it'd be a cool video to discuss the medley of journals that I've accumulated over the years. I have been journaling pretty much since 2009, which is like 11 years of my life. And I had I had journals before then. For example, this is a journal that I had when I was in third grade. Um, leave me a comment if you also had this journal in third grade. I hate not being perfect, so I haven't changed. I had journals like this on and off throughout my childhood, but as a child, it's difficult to have that discipline to journal. Pretty much every time I finish a journal, I kind of take that time to look through my old ones, just reflect on my journey throughout all the notebooks. I kind of have like a melancholy relationship with my previous journals because at the same time that it's really interesting to read through all my past experiences and thoughts and feelings, it's also kind of sad sometimes because I've just had some really depressing moments in my life, but um, I would say that journaling has been incredibly important for my life and my well-being because I am very introverted and very sensitive and I have a lot of feelings and so I love journaling and I pretty much do it every day now especially during the pandemic when I am even more alone than I usually was. Journaling has kind of kept me sane over the years, but I think it's just like a really great practice for me just to kind of get my thoughts out on paper, as well as chronicle my, my journey of self-love and accepting who I am and just learning how to be me. So I really love journaling. I think it's a great experience. I think it's a great habit for everybody. Um, to gain from and it's cool because journaling can be like whatever you want it to be. I usually use my journals as just somewhere to vent my thoughts and feelings because a lot of the times I don't want to put how I'm feeling on the internet because I will probably delete it an hour later if I do. I'm kind of private sometimes. So I started this journal in November of 2009. An anonymous wallflower is what I titled my journal. And at the time, I really loved the person being a wallflower. That's what inspired me for this title. The form of this journal was like really almost like verse and like poetic. So I remember when I got this, I decided like this would be my journal, but it wouldn't be a place where I felt bogged down to chronicle like every specific thing that happened to me in the day, because that's why I would discontinue journaling in the past is that I'd get overwhelmed by all the things that I needed to document in my journal and it would be like several days would pass and I'd be like there's no way I can write down everything that happened to me in all those days so rather when I started this I was like you know what I don't need to provide any context I'm just gonna put my emotions down I don't even need to write what they refer to and I think that really helped me develop um, journaling as like a practice or like a self-discipline just to not put pressure on myself to write about every little thing that is going on in my life here is a picture from this one this was my second notebook this one was begun in September 2010. At the time that I started these, I would have been like 14 or 15. I had a Tumblr at the time and I would uh, vent or post things on my Tumblr and then print them off and stick them in here because it was just way easier than writing out my thoughts and feelings. This is my third one. This one's way larger. It's the, it's got three divisions in it. So I really liked these notebooks because they had uh, pockets in them and I like to print things off and save them so um, I have like, this is a story I wrote I think when I was younger named Charles. I really like the name Charles because I loved the person being a wallflower. I would print off song lyrics or like images that I found on the internet that I liked. Oh, we're getting some cool blinds effects. You guys can kind of see my, my plants <laughs> through the blinds in my window. Oh wow, this page I actually printed off a, bun printed off a bunch of my pictures. <laughs> Angsty! Um, 
pictures from my backyard. I also like would write a lot of song lyrics in my books because I listened to a lot of music that was angsty like myself and relatable, huh? So this was my fourth notebook. This one I really like because it had graph paper. So I could do like a lot of cool things with it. Um, I think one page I did a crossword puzzle. This one is from when Pottermore came out and my username was LumisWillow45. And then I got stuck on the potions level and I never returned to Pottermore. Because that's my relationship with video games. Like once I get stuck, I just give up. I don't care. I don't have the patience for that. This was the next one. I'm sorry that the time of day that you're only seeing stripes. Uh, here, I'll move you over here. That's a little bit better. So this one, I believe I turned 16 during the contents of this notebook. And this is when I started saving like a lot of movie stubs or like this is a ticket from when I went to Cedar Point one time. Or this one's from the medieval fair. This one starts off with a fortune, which says, the only way to get to the top is to get off your bottom, which I thought was funny. I would save a lot of things and just kind of stick them in my notebook so that, I don't know, I thought that they were like fun mementos of whatever I had been through. Here's the next one. I was still titling my notebooks uh, An Anonymous Wallflower, and then each one was subtitled An Elongated Series of Farewells, part whatever. So this is part six, the sixth notebook I had. And um, this one was kind of nice because it was tiny and really easy to keep with me in my backpack and not weigh everything down. Apparently I saw Scary Movie 5, which I have no recollection of seeing. Okay, after that was this notebook, which was cool because it had a little little thingy on it and a little pretzel that says Twisted. At the end of a lot of my notebooks, I would either include like song lyrics or like a poem that resonated with me. So um, I think this was like a Charles Bukowski poem I really liked for some reason. Can't say that I'm still a fan of him. After that was this one, and this notebook spanned from a couple years because at the time um, I was a freshman in college, and so I was doing a lot of new things, having a lot of new experiences, and didn't really want to take the time to sit down and journal about it. So um, I think this one actually goes through a few years um, during which I stopped journaling pretty much. Um, I would pick this up every six months, write an update, and then get back to my life. Did not keep up with it very well. And then after that was this cute little leather notebook that my friend Andrew gave me. I think he got it off of Etsy, so um, this was a really sweet gift when he gave it to me. He had um, written a note at the beginning in green ink, and then randomly throughout it he like would write little notes, and then as I wrote in the journal I would come across his notes, and it was just a really thoughtful gift, perfect for me. I think I was a sophomore at the time that I used this. So then this was after that, and I really love this journal. I just love the orange, it's so fun. It's a bookmark ribbon, which is great for journaling. It's so nice to have this. I really like this page in this one. I had drawn a comic about my day or how I was feeling. Um, some doodles on this side. This is from 2016. Another doodle page that I did with my friends. After that, I this one, which is kind of plain, but I really liked the texture of the paper in this one and the spacing between the lines. After that, I had this little cutie, which I liked because the um, paper is like really, it's kind of thin, but it's like recycled paper. So I liked that. I had this little guy, which is really cute. This is the journal that I stopped titling them, an elongated series of farewells, and I started titling it Shine On You Crazy Diamond. So this one starts off with a picture I drew of my cousin, Nora, because I was with her at the time that I started this journal. After that, I used this notebook, which is really tiny, but I liked it because it didn't have any lines on it. So you can see that Shine On You Crazy Diamond, chapter 14. And I, looking back, am so impressed with myself because look how tiny my writing was. Like, no lines whatsoever, and I was writing so tiny. So then after that was this one, 
and I really liked this notebook. So I started this one last year and I used it um, through like March of this year. I had saved it for years before I actually used it because that's how I am with notebooks. People gift me notebooks all the time because I'm a writer and even though I don't get to them right away, I always do use these notebooks that people give me. This one was also a gift for, uh, I think, I think Betsy gave this to me. I love that people buy me notebooks because then I never have to buy them myself. Yeah, this is my most recent one. This is the one that's been with me through the pandemic and really just where I knock my head against. <laughs> I've chosen that my next journal I use will be this one. I'm pretty sure my mom gave this to me. Um, it's got one of the, the bookmarkers and it's got really pretty pages. So, um, again, I'm sorry about this sun. This is ridiculous. Those are the journals that I've, I've had with me through all the years and um, they've really been well loved. They have hugged my thoughts when nobody else would. Make sure to leave me a comment letting me know if you keep a journal as well or if you hate journaling. Thanks so much for hanging out with me and listening to my thoughts. Uh, have a good one and bye! See ya!